welcome back. Here, here we are. We're doing IFIS basics, and we are in module number nine. Module number nine, and what we're going to be doing in module number nine is extracting data, taking, getting data, getting something out for all that work that you've been doing, so that you can see what's going on with your data in the IFIS. And remember, with IFIS, creating data in the IFIS is simple four steps. That is to create the location, assign it to a workbook, create a site, create your activity. And make sure you get that tool identifier or the compliance agreement number entered into the system properly. And these are our four data, these are our four data creation steps. So easy in the IFIS, anybody can do it so long as you know what these four steps are. And so Jenny, so what we're doing is that we're learning how to extract data out of the IFIS. Yeah, so and, can I give you a scenario, Rudy? Then? Okay, yeah, go for it. So let's say that I'm a supervisor and I would like uh -huh. to extract or export data from IFAS. And what I want to know is I want to know what programs are collecting data based on a date range. So I want that broad view of during this month, what programs are collecting data? How do I pull that? Okay. So let's make that sentence. So how would we make that sentence? So we would be, we want to work with activities, which are surveys. And on that survey, we want to filter data for a date range for a specific office, right? That's what we want to be able to do, okay? So let's go and do that. Let's take a look at the IFIS. Remember, you have to go ahead and open up the IFIS. You have to log in. And you're going to, if you're USDA, you can log in with your link pass, or if you're not, you can use your e-authentication user name and password. And if you don't know how to do any of those things, make sure you click in the link description below to find out which module you need to go to. And we're creating that, um, so we're going to sign in, and here we are, we're signed in. Make sure that you have your name up there, make sure you're in the correct office. We're here in the home tab, and take that quick look down here in the system announcement to make sure nothing funky is going on with the program, with the IFIS program, so that you can get what you need to have done, okay? And again, using those lexicon of words, we're gonna create, create that compliant, uh, the computer application sentence, which is we are, we are working with activities and surveys because we want to find out the activities within a specific date range for a specific office. Jenny, what do you think we're going to do now that we've created our computer application sentence? We want the activities tab there. Yep. Okay. And once you click that, that turns green and lets us know we're in activities. And we want to look into surveys, which is selected, but I would select it again to be sure. And then mm -hmm. we want to filter those surveys and all those filters are displayed because we have that little checkbox ticked under display search filters. Mm -hmm. Um, and then here we should be able to enter some data, including um, activity start date and end date and get that date range. Exactly. So we're going to take a look at the date range of June 1st through June 15th of 2020, because everything in hindsight is 2020, right? And we're going to do this for a specific date range. We don't care about which program because we want to see all programs and we're gonna do it for a specific office, okay? Once we have those parameters in there, all we have to do is go ahead and click on search. And it's gonna go ahead and search through. And because we're, we, we're using a date range, it may take a little bit of time in order for it to find all that information. This was pretty quick. And here we know that we've got 1,876 records. Now that's a lot of records, but we wanna be able to see all of them. And how many records are we looking at, Jenny? Is there any way to really know how many records we're actually displaying that we're looking at? Is there any, how, how can we do that? The messaging says showing one to 100 of a thousand. And then it, we also are on page one of 10. So we're looking at, I'd say the first 100 records. Correct, we're looking at the first 100. We've got 10 pages but we're not seeing everything because we know that we've got 876 more records that we would like to be able to see. So did we get our result? Yes, we got our result. Did we get all of it? No, we can't take a look at all of it. And plus it can be pretty daunting um, to take a look at all of that at the same time. 
um, this particular office has been able to do a good job with getting the all their information. It looks like they've got some commercial properties in here because we've got a cereal farms, we've got continental vineyards. Um, we know what addresses they are, they are in, the site name, site numbers, all the activity, what was being done. And we're also tracking a, a specific trap here in the tool identifier, okay? But now what we wanna be able to do is we wanna see all 1800 records. Jenny, do you think that there might be some exporting options that we could use to extract data from the IFAS? Do you think there's any way that we can do that? Is there, because like 90% of the answers that I have for my question, where do we find it? On the page and the screen in front of you. Well, Rudy, okay. it's the messaging seems to say down at the bottom and it isn't right in your face, but you do need to look a little down at the bottom left. It says export options and you can and then there's uh, the typical link blue writing for CSV, XML and Excel. So I think probably so Excel would be the way I'd want to go. There you go. So we go ahead and click on Excel. Got to give it a minute, depending on how many records you're extracting, it may take a second for it to, to get it set up. So then once it comes in here, make sure that you give it a good, know where you're placing your data, okay? A lot of people just put it on the desktop, but make sure you find the appropriate location to put your data, and then make sure that you give it a good name. Usually what I'll try to do is I'll just, I'll try to start it out with the year, and then whatever the month uh, number is, and then the date, spelling out the month and then any other information following that. So this is the one, the first to the 15th of June of 2020. And all activities for slow. Okay, and now we're gonna save it and it's gonna extract it out. And once it's done down here at the bottom, we can go ahead and open that Excel spreadsheet. And when it opens up, this is the way it's going to look. So I got one here. Is that right? Yep, here it is. So, and this is what it looks like. When it comes in, then all you have to do is spread out your information. You can select the upper left-hand corner, double click in between a column, and then it will spread everything out for the width of each of the fields. And then you can take a look at your data. Come in here and I usually freeze that top row, turn on my filters. And now I can easily see that there were two programs running for that, for that time frame. We know where all the locations are here. They're all listed. If we wanted to search for one, um, those are location names, location addresses, and all the other information that comes in. And then when we take a look at if we got all of our records, Jenny, did we get all of our records? Did it sure looks like it. It sure looks like right. it. IFIS said 1876. So if we count that top row, then we've got 1876 is the same here. Exactly. So we got all of our information and now we can observe what we need to observe so far as extracting data out of the IFIS. And because we, this, we did a good job with making sure that we filled in addresses, we know the address of the locations that we're working with. And if we didn't have the addresses and we filled in a remote uh, value, uh, at least we know the name of the establishment that we're working with uh, for wherever they're located. So that's how we're able to extract data out of the IFAS for a specific date range. So let's, so that's how we can do that. So how does that work for you, Jenny? That's awesome, Rudy, thank you. How about one more scenario? Okay, let's go for it. Let's say I have been diligently entering data just like these folks have. And under the tool identifier, I've always had my trappers input the trap ID number. Could I uh -huh. search by 
that tool identifier and find all the information on a specific trap? Yeah, we sure could. We sure can. Now, let's make that computer application sentence again. So we're working with activities and surveys, and we want to filter out our information for a specific tool identifier. Hmm. Where on the screen would we be able to display our search filters? How would we be able to do that? Well, I know we're already in the right pane. We're under activities uh -huh. and surveys, which is where I want to search. And then there's a little tick box there that says display search filters. And if I check that box, I'll get all my filters. Yeah. And then we can find our tool identifier search field. We can enter in our information that we have for that trap. Is every Does everything look correct? Or do you think we need to change some other things? I'm a little worried because we still have that date range in there. And I'd like to see good. everything on that trap. That's good. That's a good catch. So we want to make sure when we're when we're doing multiple searches within the IFAS, sometimes the search filters are still holding the information from the previous search. So we want to make sure that we clear those things out. So now that we've got our tool identifier in there, we know what office it is. We're going to go ahead and click on search. Now we have all of the two, the same tool identifier in there, and we can see that this is the location. There's a location address. It looks like uh, their code FY is probably the front yard. And we can see the activity dates, and we can see that these are in chronological order for from 2020 going all the way back to 2017. And how many total records do we have showing here, Jenny? Yeah, it tells us at the bottom left, right at the bottom, showing 1 to 44 of 44. So we're seeing all the records, and there are 44 entries. And this particular trap was installed on... 126 2017 and we can see that it's an inst the first initial installation and then we can come back up here and we can see all the things that they did it looks like there was one time where we, they replaced a missing trap it might have got blown away whatever the case may be and that's all the information on this particular trap and they've done a good job this particular office has done a good job in order to fill in that tool identifier so we know which trap it is and apparently it looks like this trap has never, ever, ever moved since it was installed. It has stayed at the same exact location and the same exact site in the front yard. And if we needed to go in there and edit anything, all we'd have to do is click on the little clipboard on the left-hand side and we can make any changes if there needs to be any kind of change made. Go in there, make the change, whatever it might be and then you click on save in order to save it. And that's how we're able to search for a specific trap that's in the system that we have conducted surveys on. We've searched for data uh, in a specific date range, and we've also searched for a specific trap or tool identifier within the system so we can get all the information. We also extracted the data out of the system and found that we could see more than 1,000 records that were displayed in the IFAS so that we can do something with it. Thanks, Trudy. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you very much. We'll see you later.